extended reading for September. Welcome to this reading. So I just watched the video again and invited Spirit in and we'll see what messages they have for you guys from the beginning and then we'll go through the comments. So it looks like a lot of this is the you guys wanting a loving, beautiful marriage, potentially pregnancy with children, uh, with a, you know, the way that we would envision a beautiful relationship and a, and a beautiful family. And your wish is granted was the very first card for you guys. That card came up in other readings, but for you, it was the number one card. So uh, that's kind of important as far as spirit letting you know that your wishes are granted so whatever the situation you know is or was at the time that the wish was granted it's like it started the process of ending what the situation that you had that's in contrast to the beautiful marriage that you're wanting uh, the reading was, was I thought spirit did a great job of kind of addressing everything that might come up and yet, as an extended, they want to address mm, the idea that because it was so heart-centered and that heart card came up in the very beginning, that it's very easy for us to close our heart down to protect it. So as this divorce might be happening or as this split might be happening, a very bad breakup might be going on, it looks like... Um, closing our heart to what we think is protecting ourselves closing our heart to protect ourselves and so they were saying that that is primarily the reason that the heart card wants to go so at the front of your reading front and center and, and just love 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 throughout the reading because it's very important that you allow your heart to stay open so even when it hurts you know process it clear it um, take care of yourself do some loving things for yourself but the the um, challenge and the the, the what's, what doesn't work <laughs> about shutting your heart down to protect it is that it shuts it down from the good stuff as well so when you it's not possible for us to shut down from negative but still allow positive um, if we're not allowing ourselves to feel to protect ourselves and so they're saying you know it, as as painful as it might be keep your focus on what's coming to keep your heart open it's really really important so Archangel Michael came to say you are safe uh, there's another indication of some of you might be wanting to close your heart down or not trust anybody anymore or um, just this way of just sort of closing your heart down to protect yourself he's saying you are safe to to leave your heart open uh, to leave your heart open keep an open heart that's what they wanted to say um, they also wanted to speak to the analogy of the kitchen, the analogy of the kitchen, and they want to talk about how the walls had to come down. And in this extended, they're wanting to relate the walls of the kitchen coming down to the walls of your heart coming down. <laughs> In other words, don't put walls up to try to protect your heart space. Let those walls come down in two, two ways. One is, if you're putting walls up to protect yourself, let those come down. You are safe. The other is, there may have been situations in your childhood, some traumas in your childhood where you built walls up at that age, you put walls up in your heart to protect it at that age. And it's with that frequency and carrying those wounds that this relationship now that's ending, um, it could have been that those walls that brought that relationship in. Does that make sense? Childhood traumas will create a frequency in you where there's sort of a hole in you and um, a partner will come and fill that, meaning it will play out the situation so that you have an opportunity to heal that. So 
they're saying that the walls coming down from this dissolving of this relationship, from tearing down the walls to create the new kitchen, in the analogy of tearing down the walls that created that marriage that's not working. And so they're asking you to tear down the walls from childhood traumas that would have brought in the relationship that is now dissolving. Does that make sense? So they're wanting you to really take a good look at the relationship as it's dissolving. What brought that in? What traumas might you have had? So if you're, you're divorcing from someone who, uh, I don't know, who abandoned you all the time, who just left you alone all the time, where is there um, that element in your childhood there there would be a trauma there and there would be a wall up or a hole in you that is the reason that that relationship came to be for you so they're saying it is it is a it is a gift everyone is guiltless meaning that there because you are given an opportunity in this divorce to really look at what didn't work does that make sense so you have an opportunity to really take a good hard look within you of what would have brought that in. Where are the patterns from your childhood? Where was there a trauma in relation to whatever's not working as to why you're divorcing so that you can heal that in your heart space so that as this wish that comes true and your next this beautiful relationship comes in it will in fact be beautiful because you will have taken the walls down and healed those aspects from your childhood that brought in this marriage that's now not working does that make sense i hope that i hope that makes sense it's it's a uh, it's it's a really powerful and really deep message guiltless in truth meaning this this was a person who came as in response to a trauma that you were carrying with walls up in your heart from something in your childhood something from past lives and so they're asking you to really take a look at that um, um, before you move forward. So as this divorce finalizes and they're saying, you know, your wish is granted, there's this beautiful marriage over here that you're wanting, make sure they're, they're really encouraging you to take some time in between the divorce to the new wonderful beautiful thing soulmate uh, take some time in between to really heal these parts of you so that the beautiful relationship that comes in is coming in to uh, connect with you as a whole solid beautiful person within yourself so that that is what you attract so that's what you attract if someone was cheating on you and that's why you're getting a divorce well then you might want to look at trust right at trust where is there something similar to this that may have happened in the past in your childhood in a trauma or it could have been in past lives but if someone is cheating on you that's kind of showing you a bit of someone that you can't trust so where did that start in you? Is it possible that that started in you? And they're asking you to look at that. And because that, that that's happening, um, you can forgive, mm, forgive whatever occurred there and forgive yourself for putting up the walls that would bring it in again. Forgive yourself for not, you know, um, I used to call it for myself personally. I used to, I used to say I didn't, I didn't grow myself up before I went from one to the next, you know. I didn't take the time to grow myself up and heal these inner, these inner traumas so that I can attract and connect with and vibrate with, right, as magnets a, a healthy and whole and beautiful relationship so uh, forgiving myself for ironically not growing myself up right that would have been my job to grow myself up any holes and traumas that we have within our being from childhood traumas past life traumas no one else can fill that up 
for us. So what can happen is we get into the next relationship and it feels really good. It feels like parts of us that are missing or, or um, wounded or broken, it feels like this other person can come and sort of fill that up and fix it, but they can't. And it's not going to, it will be a matter of time before that breaks down as well. Does that make sense? Because it's not possible for another person to heal our inner wounds. It's an inside job. So they're asking you to forgive, forgive yourself, forgive them, and, and in a way, thank, thank the person that you're divorcing for bringing this particular trauma to your attention, giving you an opportunity to really look at why didn't this work? What is it in me that would have attracted this? And taking the opportunity to say thank you to them so that you can um, take the opportunity to heal that within yourself. There's the gift. That's the gift. And it's healing in your heart space. It's healing your heart space. Love, 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 love. Loving yourself enough to heal yourself. Right? Clear and shield was a card that came up and they wanted to speak to that because again it could be a very difficult person that you're divorcing so it could be very very messy and uh, so yeah you want to go inside as to the elements of this relationship that are in you that would have resonated with that that would have brought that to you so resonated with that. Life doesn't happen to you. It happens through you and for you. So as you have a particular frequency, vibration, traumas, wounds, you know, whatever they are, that is creating a particular frequency. And so it will attract magnetically one who will tap that for you to show you <laughs> where there's a wound basically and so we could say thank you because now you can heal that with self-love loving yourself to heal to heal through that so take time for just you uh, doing things you love starting the business that the reading talked about at the end you know find things that you love take some time to do some healing before you go into the next uh, relationship that you dream about um, you want to heal the things that made this one not work and also while you're at it you know look at other previous relationships that didn't work and maybe there are some other wounds there that you'd want to heal it also could be that it's the same wound you know we tend to keep Keep, if you've had three relationships where the, the guy cheated on you every time, <laughs> there's a pattern there showing you that, that there's something in you that resonates with someone who would cheat on you. So where's the root of that? So you can heal that so that the beautiful relationship can be amazing. Okay, is there anything else that they wanted to say? I wanted to, so guiltless in truth. Um, heal from the inside. Love, 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 and relax into that. Yeah, so while, <laughs> while Spirit was, was giving me all this to write down the notes, I could hear a lot of you going, but, but you don't understand, but, it was like this, but this person did this, and they're just saying, exhale. <sighs> so Spirit is wanting you to just exhale and just allow yourself to just you know really go into your heart space and feel the love that's in your own heart space keep it open I know it's hard I know it's hard from personal experience I did the same thing I thought you know because it's logical to my mental mind it's logical my mental math mind I'm a, I'm a math person um, it's logical to think that okay that was painful to my heart I'll just I'll just not feel anything and then I can keep going about my life <laughs> I just won't feel anything and then the day came when when I realized okay that does not work and I just remember standing there just standing there I put on um, that Christmas movie it's a wonderful life <laughs> Because that always makes me cry. It always wakes up my heart and makes me cry. So I put that movie on on purpose. It's like, wait a minute, I gotta open my heart back up. This doesn't work to not feel love. If I'm not, if I close it down to not feel pain, I don't feel love either. 
I can intellectually see it, but not feel it. And that was not going to work. So I put on that movie, and I started crying, and I just remember standing there just going, I love, I love because I love, because I am love. I will love, I love, I love, I love. I will receive love, I will give love, I will be love. And just crying, just sobbing as my heart just cracked open and opened back up. And then life changes so fast. Everything in your life will change so fast. So allow your heart to open back up. Let those walls come down and open your heart back up. It's so important for you guys. Okay, so that's what they wanted to say regarding the general reading. And so now we'll go down and answer your questions one by one. So if you want to join me, I'm right here on the page looking at each of these comments. And so we're just starting as the page goes. So it starts with Danielle, great words of encouragement. This was much needed when I divorced in 2009 because when you've come to the realization you have to start all over from scratch. It's very overwhelming and embarrassing. But I wouldn't change anything about that because having peace of mind over being unhappy is an understatement. I, I wouldn't wish divorce on anyone, but you'll never understand the previous statement unless you've been through it and conquered it with grace and humility. Beautiful comment. Thank you so much, Danielle. So they want to speak to coming to the realization that you have to start all over from scratch and it can be overwhelming and embarrassing. Embarrassing, feeling like you accomplished something, like um, embarrassing um, if it's falling apart would indicate that you put part of your value in creating this. Uh, so embarrassing, uh, yeah, it can it can feel like that, you know. But so many go through divorce and breakups and and things. So many, the statistics are really high, but. As you say, better to go through that than to, than to stay in a relationship that's not working, to stay where it's just, just not working. Peace of mind, once you get through it, to the other side is so uh, having, worth having done it. Uh, the other good thing about starting over from scratch is, you know, then you get the opportunity to fall in love again. You know, that's exciting. Um, that you will again have the opportunity to fall in love again with someone. So that that is that's exciting to think about. And Alicia, uh, yes, going through the same thing, going through it, walked away from everything. Yeah, it's it's just you know it can, can get to a point where it's just not worth it anymore. It's just not. So yeah, it can be really hard. And then you realize, you know, that your your value is, you know, it's that you're worth better. Yeah. Grace and humility just to get to get through it. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Danielle. It's beautiful. Natrina, you are so sweet. You look so good hearted. You speak so smooth. Uh, as if you're healing the brokenhearted. You look worried like you feel responsible for all of us. All we need is love and some friendly advice. Thank you and kisses from Greece. Uh, Natrina, thank you for that comment. And yeah, I responded that, you know, thanks. I'll look at that. Uh, I, and, and in my response, yes, I, you know, I've been through this. So I know how painful it is. But yeah, just that, that pain in, of that pain of those suffering, yeah, I feel that. <laughs> I feel it uh, with you. But I do, I do understand I'm not responsible for you. I'm really actually quite big on that, that, that you guys are doing the work, you're doing the work. And you are the ones who have to heal yourselves. You know, I can uh, offer all the advice, you know, spirit can offer all kinds of advice, and then we have this free will. I get it. It's free will, and you decide for yourself what you do with any uh, advice, any love, any any um, guidance. It's entirely 100% up to you. So if you're feeling like I'm worried, it's it's because I feel, I'm feeling the pain of some of you, and it, it it's painful to me. 
So, thank you for sharing that. Let's see, Reba. Yes, I got divorced, and now I want a beautiful marriage. But for this divorce, I can't believe anyone. Oh, yeah. So, Reba, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, that one would be uh, trust. And, you know, not, not being able to believe anyone. It's, you know, if you, through the divorce, mm, it might have been really, really, really yucky in the legal system. Uh, there's so much deceit and manipulation with words and who did what and they can twist everything and just, you just, yeah, it becomes very hard to know who you can trust and who you can't trust in a divorce in the legal system. Anyone involved in a divorce, there could be some people that are really not, not trustworthy. Lots of them. And so they're asking you to count and get s s clear about exactly who in your situation, Reba, or anyone else who resonates with it, who can relate to this, get specific about exactly who is, is, is you know, ca causing you to feel this way. Uh, the, maybe the person you are divorcing, his lawyer. His second lawyer, his third lawyer, <laughs> I don't know. Your lawyer, your second lawyer, the judge, mediators. You know, get very, very specific about exactly who are the players in this that are making you feel like you can't trust anybody. And what they're wanting you to recognize is that in truth, it might be four people. Four. It can make us feel like we just can't trust anybody in the whole wide world. But in a whole world of millions and millions and millions of people, in comparison, if you look at your situation, there's probably literally maybe four people, four, who are not trustworthy. But that doesn't say uh, anything about any of the other millions of people out there. Yes, there are people that you're not going to be able to trust that are not trustworthy. And there are millions that are. So, they want to make that point. Um, that um, comparison of, of the number of people just made it so much easier to put it in a perspective. Okay, I can still trust people, and just because they might be lying and cheating and awful, that is nothing to do with me, really. It has to do with their character. It's just not who I am. And yet again, they're saying that they're, they're asking you and anyone else this resonates with to go within and look for potentially a childhood trauma or some kind of trauma where trust, where you were, um, what's the word, deceived and it was traumatic for you, where you were, um, you know, tricked, lied to by someone very important. It might be a parent. They're saying parent potentially mm, betrayal. If there was a betrayal from even past lives, now they're saying there's past life betrayal uh, to where trust was broken, then there could be a frequency in you in the subconscious where you want to now go in and look at that to heal that, to break the cycle of bringing that in again. So for you saying, you know, so so can't, it, f because of this, can't trust anybody, it, it could uh, block you from the beautiful marriage. So they're saying heal that. Heal that now. Um, um, shift your focus into healing that from the beautiful marriage. Put the beautiful marriage on a shelf and turn your focus to you healing, trust, betrayal, being lied to, being hurt in that way, and see if you can heal that aspect of yourself before you look at the next, the next marriage. 
Okay, so they're saying, you know, that your wish is granted. You are wanting sort of a, a beautiful marriage intellectually. That's what we think. We think, yeah, yeah, I would just want a great marriage where it's just fun and, and loving and, and, and wonderful. But if deep inside you are resonating in your subconscious from a frequency of betrayal and mistrust, then the next one relationship you get will be another one to show that to you. Does that make sense? So now's the time to go in and heal that inner wound so that that relationship doesn't repeat. And by healing that inner wound, you will be able to trust yourself to know that that is not what I'm bringing in anymore. I've worked through that. I've healed that in myself. That that won't be re that won't resonate with you anymore. <laughs> so now you can trust. There are many, many, many millions of people that you can trust. <laughs> so you just want to heal that within yourself first before you move on. I hope that helps. Uh, Brianna, this is exactly what I'm currently going through. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Yeah, you're so welcome. The energy. Oh, my energy is beautiful. Thank you so much. And all the five people that... <laughs> Thank you. Z Lin, uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Thanks a lot. I love it. really inspires me. Uh, I finished uh, with my ex so badly. Lost everything. Got sick. Oh, yeah. I was hurt so much. I closed my heart for a long time. It's time to start over. Hope my beautiful marriage is coming soon. And so, Z, again, hopefully, hopefully, what Spirit has shared so far will be really helpful for you in terms of opening your heart back up and why you want to open your heart back up. Um, um, because y you you want to experience the beautiful marriage, and the only way to truly experience a beautiful marriage is to have a big open heart. That's where you start, is with your big open heart that uh, healed some of these wounds so that the beautiful marriage actually uh, is beautiful <laughs> on both sides of it. Yeah, lost everything and got sick. Yeah, when that stress carries on for too long, it can it can land in your in our bodies and, and make us sick, yeah. So, uh, so Z, I hope that what Spirit has shared so far can be really helpful, and I'll be, I'll be uh, sending you know extra love to all you guys for you know courage and and being able to go within and heal those wounds of where these patterns started that attracted these people, you know, that resonated these people to you to bring this wound to your attention so that you could heal it. Hope that helps. Sandra, hello sweet one. <laughs> Hi. I am Sag Cancer Rising Leo Moon. Beautiful combination. September blew me away. I can't miss it. Can't miss, yeah. My dreams are coming true. So blessed. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Carol, this was way helpful. A uh, heart surgery two weeks ago and I have a divorce hearing on Monday. I'm going to watch this many times prior before the judge, before we see the judge. I, w I hope that went well for you. Yeah, I said a prayer for you on that Monday. I really hope that that went, that that went really well for you. Heart surgery. See the heart. The heart is, is so at the root of this for you guys. Yeah, it hurts our heart. And when it goes on for too long, or and or when we shut our heart down our heart down it doesn't allow it to be open to let in loving energy loving energy is the healing energy love heals your heart needs to be open to receive and embody love for to to allow it to heal so carol we're sending you so much love in your heart space for your heart to get healthy. Yeah, I hope that went well for you. Christian Taylor, I recently just cut my ex off for good. We weren't married, but on and off. Yeah, that on and off. This has helped me so much. I've learned to be strong and love myself. Oh, wonderful. Christian, yes, that's what Spirit is saying. That's exactly what Spirit's saying is loving yourself first. To be strong and love yourself first. Leos, you guys can do this. You can so do this. 
Yes. You know, anytime, anytime you have a relationship that's typically on and off, there's something going on there within you that's resonating. You know, to, like, like there's something that's telling you that, that, that this isn't the beautiful marriage. You know, if you're off and on, there, there's something that wants to be healed. So, uh, something that wants to be healed. So, take a look at that so you can heal it. So that beautiful marriage can come. Thank you, Christian. Italy, he's not guiltless. He cheated with multiple people, LOL. Uh, but forgiveness is important either way. Italy, hopefully, hopefully what we said so far, yeah, he's, you know, he's guilty if he's cheating on you. That's not okay. That's not okay. And forgiveness is not saying that that's okay. It's just saying, okay, I see it from a different perspective and I'm gonna let this go now so hopefully everything Spirit has shared so far um, um, is helpful for you Italy thank you so much for your comment okay Nisha thank you this resonates hoping for the best to happen after undergoing the worst uh, since here God bless you and all may your words Turning true day after day. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I hope what Spirit has shared has been really helpful. Nisha, thank you for sharing. Andrew, this is for people who've been married for years, isn't it? Not for people who just got married. Well, hopefully if you if you just got married, then yes, you may have have that that beautiful relationship. And yeah, so I, I answer to that. It's it's um it's for anyone that, that resonates with the message, with this message. Uh, this is my first time on your channel from uh, Seti. Although it didn't resonate because it's not my situation, you're very caring and loving your delivery of Spirit's message. Maybe next time. Yeah, so how, how, that was so nice of her to make a comment. It didn't resonate with her, but... Um, but she appreciated the the message and uh, so in my response I wanted to speak to that where you know so even if something didn't resonate for her specifically she might uh, said he, mm, thank you for sharing that so you and others might you know whenever you learn something uh, you could share that maybe with you might have a friend or know someone or run into someone who's going through a divorce and hopefully this perspective that you're learning uh, in, from Spirit's messages today you might be able to help someone else so thank you for sharing that I've been going through a bad breakup from N8V and I've been praying for a new marriage uh, thank you for sharing and my, my, my heart goes out to you with a bad breakup so uh, hopefully by ch switching the focus to healing yourself from what may have um, might, might be going on maybe the um, in looking at that relationship what elements of that not working might be something in you that is calling for your attention calling to be healed Thank you for sharing. I hope this helps you. Tina, I'm a single mother of three teenagers, working hard to accomplish her dreams, wishing for my life companion. So I'm tired of doing it alone and tired of failed relationships. So, Tina, yeah, I really hope, um, I really hope that, share, that Spirit's message so far today has been really helpful for you. Yeah, especially single mom, three teenagers. You know, let them see, let them see, uh, you know, it, as, a, as a powerful, accomplished role model, you know, uh, the failed relationships, you know, take a good look at those and, and go within and see if you can heal up some of that stuff. And then you guys, it's amazing. Your life changes so fast. You can have, you could meet someone once you heal some of these very very quickly you could meet this the most amazing beautiful companion yeah so the failed relationship so you want to look at that what where in you are those triggers thank you so much Tina Sherry thank you Laura 
uh, for young people, what about us old folks? Well, Laura, <laughs> at, at age, uh, age doesn't matter. You can, you're never too old for anything. Uh, you're never too old for anything. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're so welcome. No girlfriend yet, Abdul. Any chance to meet my soulmate? Any chance to meet my soulmate? Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Absolutely, Abdul. You can meet your soulmate anytime. But here's the thing about soulmates. Soulmates come in many shapes and sizes and colors. A soulmate could be, you know, every relationship, essentially every relationship you have, I believe, is some form of soul mate. Because uh, by sort of definition, soul mates are people, not necessarily the beautiful, perfect, wonderful, um, you know, counterpart to you, but oftentimes, <clears throat> excuse me, the ones that will teach you the most, that the ones that will help your soul expand and grow at the deepest level and depending on where you are a soulmate uh, could be someone to come in and and sh uh, reveal to you the um, you know as they were saying so betrayal they're, they're using that word betrayal again so if you were betrayed in a past life even in your subconscious you uh, soulmate could be another soul who will come in form a relationship with you and betray you and it's it's designed to show you, reveal to you, that there's some betrayal energy in you that's calling to be healed. You know, this lifetime is not like other lifetimes. We're, we're in this shift, this huge shift. In this lifetime, our souls came in here to heal a lot of this stuff that's been going on for lifetimes. So a, any soulmate in this lifetime, um, will either, you know, if you have some energy, some uh, that wants to be healed on a soul level, a soul mate will come in and, and show that to you by acting out the very thing that wants to be healed. So this is why Spirit is saying, look at the relationships that you've been through because they're showing you where you have wounds that want to be healed. So, yes, Abdul, <laughs> and everyone else, uh, be really mindful of, you know, sort of dreaming and wishing for this beautiful thing. They're really asking you guys, Leos, the leaders of the future, Leos, the, the leaders, to shift your focus from simply wanting this beautiful loving relationship make sure that you are um, you know looked ha have have looked at the relationships that you've been through or looked at your childhood where there might have been some traumas and how that would affect your relationships if you are female look at your mom and the relationship she had with your father look at your father you know, whether you're male or female, you know, look at your parents. Uh, there's the mother-daughter, there's the father-daughter, mother-son, father-son dynamics. What did you grow up with? That Those dynamics are going to be huge in your programming. So look at that in terms of healing you before you go searching for the soulmate. Put the soulmate on the shelf and go within. The answers are inside of you. So the beautiful thing is that you can go within and, and find these wounds and heal them without having to go through another relationship that takes another, that takes three to five years out of your life while you, you know, over time figure out that, you know, and then get betrayed again to figure out that you have a betrayal hole in you. You can go within and heal that 
in a in a few days, in a moment. It takes a moment really for it to be revealed and felt and healed and understood and you know, it doesn't need to take very long, certainly not three to five years of another relationship that doesn't work because of a wound. Does that make sense? So Spirit is really asking you guys, Leos as sort of the leaders, they're showing me the lion again, the lion, the leader, the leader. Show the world how it's done. Save yourself three to five years over and over again with relationships that don't work. Soulmates soulmates that bring these wounds to your attention put that on the shelf now so so again so now this showing me so I hear some of you going okay but our wish was granted for this beautiful marriage <laughs> it is the beautiful marriage is what you're wishing for and your wish is granted uh, meaning you can have a beautiful wonderful relationship that wish is in your intellect and when you heal the inner to line up with your intellect and to line up when you heal the wounds that are causing the ones that are divorcing now that it wish is granted and that person is available for you absolutely you can have a beautiful relationship with no betrayal complete trust love mutual respect yes your wish is granted that person is here is what spirit is saying so but before you're able to to resonate with that you want to get yourself in a place where you resonate with the beautiful marriage that you're wanting intellectually does that make sense head to heart heart to the head connect those and then you'll then you'll meet this person Thank you for your question, Abdul. I hope that helps a lot of people. Thank you, Elizabeth. So sweet. Haya, needed to hear this. You're so welcome. Royal, I have faith in this. I'm ready. Yeah, hopefully everything has been really helpful today. Uh, Royal, Jesse, <laughs> Maria, resonating 100%. Wonderful. You're so welcome. Uh, Curly, I love your perspective. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Hopefully everything has been really helpful so far. I'm going through a divorce. D, D pain. I'm going through a divorce as well. But I wanted a family and children. He was just selfish. So you're divorcing this selfish person <laughs> is what I gather. Does this mean I'm going to meet someone else? who I will have a family with. You, uh, absolutely, you can meet someone else who you'll have a family with. Uh, but let me tell you, you know, with children involved, once children are involved, a divorce is now you have divorce and custody. And the emotions with children are so deep and powerful. So if you don't have children yet, D and just divorcing. If you're wanting a family and children, please, please, please go within and heal those parts of you first. So as this divorce is happening, he's just selfish, okay? So a selfish person. So look at that. Look at that. That may have happened when you were a child. It may have something about, you know, someone else being selfish and not completely caring for you that may have happened it may be that your father was selfish with your mother right do you know you know does that make sense you guys where what you're seeing and everything you're experiencing is within you you had to resonate with it in some way so by it showing up there's a wound in you that wants to be healed and that's where you want to bring your focus in to heal uh, um, and so, yes, you, mm, your wish is granted. It does mean that. So you're saying, does it mean I'm going to meet someone? Yeah, but, you know, we are co-creators with spirit. This is your life. You have free will. You know, soulmates can, can be the ones who appear to be this beautiful, perfect, wonderful uh, thing. And then uh, be the very ones that reveal to us a wound, another wound, get the same relationship again, 
right? It's this, it just repeats again until we get it, until we go in and heal that. So look at that selfish aspect is what's saying, uh, is what spirit is saying for you, D. Look at the selfish aspect. See where that might be in you to resonate. Okay, I hope that helps. Maya, thank you, Maya. Uh, Kazma, the reading I see in a different way. I had a partner for 29 years. It's all over. Kept putting the wish out. Put the wish out, and now he's appeared, but he has a blood disease. I've become a carer, which made it hard knowing if wife or carer. Now we're going through some legal stuff. It's been really hard. So here's a perfect example of a soulmate coming after one didn't work after 29 years and going right into the next one that's not not exactly what Kazma, it sounds like this was not kind of what you had in mind. <laughs> Maybe when you were wishing for this beautiful marriage you probably were not wishing to be a carer for someone and yet that's what's come in. That's where you're resonating in some way. There's a resonance in you about being a caretaker of some kind. I'd be really curious just to, you know, for you to look at the, uh, the partner for 29 years that didn't work. You know, why didn't that work? Was there carrying uh, something about that that um, did not get healed that has in some way uh, created this relationship now that has similar tendencies possibly or maybe different ones? Uh, but I love that you guys are, it looks like you're talking about it and uh, starting to communicate and, and recognizing and not letting the health issue take over. You know, look at that health issue. There's a reason this person has a health issue as well. So they could also go within and look at, you know, what's going on with the health issue? What, where is it in the body and what does it have to say? And help each other heal these, these inner wounds that brought the two of you together. You can help each other. I hope that helps. Lisa, kindness matters. Yes, it does. See, thank you for this. A sal for my broken heart. Very good, see, I'm so glad. Shaw, it's karmic. Karmic, um, karmic, you know, could be that karma, you know, uh, karma, typically, meaning sort of what we put out is what comes back to us. So there's two ways now that Spirit wants to speak to this. There's two things. One is what you resonate resonates with you. So if you resonate, even if it's subconscious, past life, subconscious with betrayal, you're going to bring in betrayal. Karmic, kind of. What you send out is what comes in. <laughs> frequency, resonance. The other is that they want to say is that it could be in a past life that you betrayed somebody. It could be that that it is uh, this betrayal is coming back to you because you betrayed someone lifetimes ago, even in this lifetime as well actually. And so now they're, they're speaking to forgive. Forgive yourself for, um, they keep using the betrayal but it could be anything. Uh, but, uh, you know, so let's say that somewhere in your youth, uh, at, at any time, if it's in this lifetime, maybe you betrayed someone. And now you have a, a relationship where you have now been betrayed back. So that could be the case. And so there again, uh, forgiveness is really helpful in terms of healing that. So again, it could be that you betrayed someone in a past life or this one. Uh, could be that you betray you were betrayed seriously and there's a wound there uh, either way you want to go in and ask so you can find out okay so well, how is this in me resonating out to to connect me with that and heal it and a big part of the healing is forgiveness forgiving yourself and forgiving the other huge going within to heal all right, and that's the last question. I hope this reading was really uh, helpful for you guys. I'm loving doing these extended. I love you guys. Until next time, take really good care of yourself. Mm -hmm.